So I've written down a few functions on, on the board here, um, which are all continuous functions. In fact, they're all functions which are continuous for every real number. And we want to understand why. Uh, now, uh, this one, b, is kind of the easiest one here. Why is this continuous? It's continuous because x squared is a polynomial. And polynomials are continuous everywhere. Um, Exponential functions are continuous everywhere. So, so g of x is a composition of two functions which are everywhere continuous. And we do have a theorem saying that the composition of continuous functions is continuous. Okay? So we know that this one is continuous everywhere. Um, what about the absolute value function? So remember that the absolute value function is given by x if x is bigger than or equal to 0 and minus x if x is less than 0. Okay? So for every negative x value, I know that the absolute value function is continuous because it's given by a polynomial at any negative x value. Similarly, I know that it's continuous at every positive x value because, again, it's given by a polynomial. Okay? The only point that's in doubt is 0. So how would I convince you that this function is continuous at 0? Well, first of all, I'd have to do the left-hand limit, right? So for A, I'd have to say that the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, the absolute value of x is the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of minus x is 0. Limit as x approaches 0 from the right the limit x approaches 0 from the right of x is also 0. And I also know that the absolute value of 0, right, when x is equal to 0, we put 0 in for x, we get 0, right? So I check all of these, and, and all of this together tells me that the limit as x approaches 0 of the absolute value of x is equal to the absolute value of 0. So now I know it's continuous at 0. I know it's continuous at negative numbers. I know it's continuous at positive numbers. So I know it's continuous everywhere. OK? Um, C, the last one. Now this one, there's a right way and a wrong way to handle something like this, right? Or, or at least, let's say, an easy way and a hard way. The hard way is to kind of try and break this down as a piecewise function and say, OK, we've got to find all the, all the zeros for sine, all the places where it changes from positive to negative, right? And, and we're gonna, it's going to be positive sine x at these, at these values, negative sine x at these other values, right? But there's infinitely many points where this function changes sine. And, and you don't want to have to try and, and look at left and right hand limits at every single one of them or try to sort of do them all in one go, right? What we want to do is we want to approach it the same way we approach part b. Because we just showed that the absolute value function is continuous everywhere. Okay? Back when we looked at the analytic limits, when we looked at the squeeze theorem, we showed that sine is continuous everywhere. Okay? And, and so what you have to realize is that what we're doing here is we're plugging the sine function into the absolute value function, right? So this is a composition, right? It's the composition of the absolute value function with the sine function. And we know that composition of continuous functions is continuous. And that's why H is continuous.